Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 0366 59 0703 768 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. Father, we were just before you this morning, longing for a depth, longing, Lord, that help will come again to us today to carry us beyond what we are familiar with, to enter into the depth of spiritual experiences with you. As we briefly search scriptures, please. Let there be light in our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Proverbs chapter 10. That's where we're taking our bearing this morning. The book of Proverbs chapter 10. Verse 5. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son. But he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. Now, as we talk about the dew of your youth, we note that there is the timing factor that is very, very critical. Dew falls in the morning. Dew falls in the breaking of a new day. There's a timing for dew to gather. And it is the dew that comes in the morning that causes a refreshing that brings a resuscitation, a, a freshness that brings a kind of life that will carry you through the daytime when the sun begins to appear. So as we are looking into a few scriptures this morning, we are praying that God will help us realize that there is a time for settling on the dew, gathering the dew for your daytime. There is the gathering of the dew. There is a time to lay hold on certain dealings of God, certain experiences that will position your life for an enduring walk with God. And the right time when the dew has to gather is in the morning of your life. And that's where we are. I'd like to note that the dew time is the freshness of your youth. And it offers you 
the greatest opportunity for forming spiritual capacity. Great, greatest opportunity for forming the correct spiritual habits and character for your glorious future. The time when the dew falls is the time that you have to undertake intensive development and formation of spiritual roots. Now, where we have read, we hear the scripture saying very clearly, he that gathereth in summer, so there's a timing for gathering, and it is that morning time of your life for gathering for the, the, the formation of the kind of life that will carry you through the years that are ahead of you. The wise son knows that if I miss the right time to gather in, a time comes when the gathering in becomes more difficult, if not impossible. The foolish son, the Bible says, he sleeps in the harvest. And what will be his own reward for sleeping at a critical time of gathering? His result, his report, or his reward will be that of shame. He will be living a wretched life. Because at the critical time he needed to gather in, he wasted it. He wiled it away. He did not realize that due time is not an everlasting time. The dew appears and after that moment, it disappears. So as we be looking into scriptures this morning, I want you to be Raising a prayer in, the, in your heart before God. And what is the prayer? May I not waste the critical time of my gathering the dew of my life. May I not become casual with the season when I am at the best time to build my spiritual roots to grow my own roots in God because a time will appear when it may actually become impossible to do so. I want to believe this morning that you belong to the category of wise sons. Amen? You are not part of they that sleep at the critical time when the dew is forming. There's a time the dew falls, and if you do not at such a point reach out to gather enough dew for the journey of your daytime, before you know it, the sun would have appeared. And once the sun begins to appear, we find out that the dew is on its way out. I'd like you to again turn your Bible to the book of Isaiah chapter 27 Isaiah 27 verse 6 He shall cause them that come of Jacob to take root Israel shall blossom and bore and fill the face of the world with fruit. God shall cause them that come out of Jacob to do what? I didn't hear you. To take root. Note that. He will cause them to take root. To grow their root into the, into the ground. And then Israel shall blossom and bored and filled his face of the world 
with fruit. Now, I want you to note the sequence of what is happening here. There is first the taking of root, the growing of root. It appears to, to be the first matter before the matter of what? Huh? Burden and blossoming and fruitfulness. The time of taking root comes first. Now, I want you to note that roots normally do not grow in sunlight. Where do roots grow? Huh? In obscurity. Under the ground. Out of sight. Roots are not phototropic. What are they? Huh? What are roots? They are hydrotropic. They are looking for water. And where is the water located? In the ground. I want you to hear that very well. Many times we are longing, even at the time we are in as youth, the first longing of many people is about shooting fruits. It's about growth, it's about fruits outside in the sunlight, in the limelight. But you see, that's not where to grow roots. Where are roots grown? Under the ground. In obscurity. So, that's the second point. The first matter we've noted is that there is a timing for growing the roots. The wise son is conscious that summertime, the time of the falling of the dew in the early morning of life, is the critical time for growing roots. But again, we are noting that growing roots is directly opposite the bearing of fruit, which is on the outside, which is for the public, which is for the limelight. And if you reverse the priority of your life, and as a young man, your first pursuit is about what to show on the outside. What have you done to your roots? You have choked the roots. You have ensured that your development can never be proper. So we notice the order here. He said, he will cause them that be of Jacob to take root, number one, and then Israel shall board it shall blossom and it shall fill the face of the world with fruit. No matter the, the scope or dimension that God is planning to take you, even to fill the face of the earth with fruit, before that can ever happen, it is that you maximize the time you were conscious of that season of life, when to first of all do what? Dig inside. Isaiah 37 verse 31. And the remnant that is escaped out of the house of Judah shall again take root downwards and bear fruit upward. That is the divine protocol. That is the order. And that must form the priority of your own life. He will take root downwards and then he will grow fruit. What? Upward. Now, when you start bearing fruit without having proper roots, you can be likened to a tree or a plant. A plant. 
like maize plant, uh, banana, plantain, that happened to suddenly get plenty fruit. It became so fruitful. But you know the capacity of the roots. If a, if a banana plant suddenly grows plenty fruit and you don't quickly rush to support it, what will happen to that plant? It will fall. So if your first target about shining for God is how to be fruitful at the expense of your personal development of roots, spiritual roots, even your fruitfulness can choke you when you are lacking spiritual stamina. And you know one thing about roots? Roots are directed straight into the ground. Every plant, every tree has its own space, has its own root space to go down. If you see a plant or a tree that is fixing its own roots on top of another tree, that's where it's putting its roots. Is that a normal, normal tree? Huh? It's parasiting. Is a parasite. Is dependent on another for survival. Many times, what we not what is the reason for several lives that from time to time we wither away. The reason is simple. They are more or less spiritual parasites who are existing on the basis of the of the fellowship. But being your own Christian, being a Christian as an individual, demands that your own roots will find its root space. Where it will dig down in order to sustain the fruit that heaven will be bringing subsequently. Now, so, if you note that roots do not grow in sunlight... Roots are not phototropic. The first matter again, you will settle in your heart. Lord, this craving for the limelight, kill it in my heart. This thing that makes me a man of the open, this thing that drives me to want to, want to shine much more than finding my proper base in God. Lord, terminate it out of my life because it's an, it's, it's an enemy of where you are going with God. And so, it says they will grow roots downwards and bear fruit upward. You know, a very big tree that you see with mighty branches and tall, do you realize that if you go down, those who study the root system, they tell us that there is a kind of lateral inversion in symmetry. That is the way you see the branches heavy and spreading on top and tall. That is a reflection of the root system and outlay in the ground. The roots are mighty and spreading out and you know as you see it up there if it's possible to have a mirror you can see there's a lateral inversion. You see that what you have spreading up is almost the same thing as what is spreading downwards. That is to say the capacity you are going to carry tomorrow is only going to be dependent and consequent upon the depth of root system, spiritual roots that you have formed over time in your life. 
And when we look at, we have the privilege of you know, being, you know, of relating with some of our elders. If you knew anybody who is standing well for God, who is progressively and continuously standing for God and bearing fruit and spreading like an Iroko tree. If you know any such child of God or man of God, if you get close, you'll be able to confirm something. That the level of his intimacy and work with God is equally strong. Not only that, another thing you are likely to confirm is that it was in the morning of his life that he built certain spiritual habits and certain spiritual capabilities that as he kept growing, they could not die, but rather we are enlarging. And that is what is making them stand out and keep burning the way you see them burning. Some years ago, one of our uncles, Brother Guile particularly, he ministered somewhere to some men of God. And it took days. And the meeting was running sometimes from morning through the night. They will only brush up and continue in the next day. It ran like that, day, night, day, night, continuously. And one of them asked a question. He said, please, sir, what is the secret of this way you are running? Some of us have been in ministry, we preach, sometimes we preach, we preach, and we don't know what else to preach again, because we have preached all that we gathered in our, in our mouth. But your own seems to be non-stop and is effortless. We have been sitting for days and nights here and we are the ones getting tired. You don't seem to expire. What's, what's the secret? And then he said, simple. The secret is this. You preach sermons. I share life. And life does not finish. I share life. Now, but life is not formed two hours to your message. Can it be formed that way? How is life formed? Over time. Then he now talked about one of the scriptures we may refer to later to this morning. That there is the secret of morning by morning. Morning by morning. Morning by morning. Praise the Lord. So this morning, I will be a bit practical to mention or highlight certain things that will be critical for your growing your spiritual roots so that this due time, enough dew would have formed in the table of your heart that will carry you through whatever years of your daytime. So, very few things I'll highlight and then we tidy up to pray. One of the very few things is the issue of your quiet time. Something as basic as quiet time is one spiritual habit that you must form 
and it becomes ingrained inside of you. Some people now can, you know, when you see some elders, the issue of quiet time has become a life. Somebody will ask some of our elders and say, ah, ah, you slept, you slept late. How come you are able to do your quiet time? Sometimes we hear them, when they come, they say, look, as God was saying to me in my quiet time this morning. Now, this is somebody that you slept four hours before him. But he's sharing the issues. What is it? Now, I want you to turn to that Isaiah. We are still in Isaiah. Move to chapter 50 now. Isaiah chapter 50. From verse 4. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth my ear to hear as the learned. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. Neither turned away back. I gave my back to the smithers and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord God will help me, therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. Hallelujah. Here is this servant of God that is reporting to us that God has given him the tongue of the learned. God has given him an utterance that wakes up the dead. God has given him a relevant message at every season, whether to individuals or to people. How did he arrive at that? How did he arrive at this kind of life of effortless fruitfulness? And he's telling us, not so many formulae, but a very simple matter. He wakened me morning by morning. He wakens my ear to hear as the learned. He wakes me up. He wakens me. I see myself having this steady early rising with God. This early rising. To see his face, to experience him, to hear his voice, to bow to him in worship. As he wakens my ear, he causes me to hear him. Now, I want you to note a few things because we are not really studying quiet time per se. We are just raising certain spiritual habits that you must get addicted to now that we form and formulate that the dew that will carry you through your daytime. And one of them is this principle of waking you morning by morning. First of all, you are the one who will wake and God will wake your spirit. But I know that when we talk of quiet time, several people have different ways they have abused it or they pretend to do it today. You don't seem to have a proper guide as to how to do it meaningfully. I see some people, they wake up in the morning. Somebody, they have written something and pasted by the side of their bed. So when they wake up, they'll be sleeping to about 7, 7.30, getting near to the time of lecture. And then as he jumps up, he takes his bath. And then he comes to that thing he wrote, I'm a champion. I'm a winner today. I overcome. 
I am made to be the head. I can never be the tail. All that I meet today on the road will bow to me. In the name of Jesus. And they are going. That is not quiet time. That is play time. Some people don't have a formula for searching the scriptures. They don't use devotional. Neither are they following book study. No. You have prayerfully determined from God. What are the di what, what's the area of need in my life now? And you, you know, there's a book that God brings to your heart that you're settling on. A book of the of the Bible, and you're moving, you know, verse to verse, and you are noting where you stopped. Tomorrow you continue from there, and you take note of the things God is saying to you. You need to have a way of trapping it. Don't be lazy about it. Don't be lousy about it. You have your devotional notes that as you come before the Lord, after he has spoken to you, there may be some small fragments that you are tying down that will become the status for an experience again another day. You are jotting it. You are noting it. You are writing down even some of your prayers that are emanating from your spirit as a result of that scripture that shone on your heart. So it's important. If you want to use devotional, stick to devotional. Have a good devotional. If you want to do a book, stick to a book and progress from there. Don't be so, you know, I've seen several things. Oh, this one I heard about. Somebody was always trying to catch something quick. Promise from the Bible. So how does he read his Bible? He will just close it like this. And then he will open it. The first verse that strikes his eyes then he will read it. And several times he was getting good, good things. So he was, he was happy. That's how he was going. One day, he did it like that. And a verse appeared. What was the verse? And Judas went and hung himself. He said, God forbid. He closed it back quickly. As he closed it back, he opened again. This time, it was in the New Testament where Jesus was speaking to the man that answered his question correctly about the Samaritan. He said, go and do likewise. From that day, he made up his mind that this is a dangerous method. You are laughing, but several of you are studying your Bible like that. That's what you call quiet time. That's another uh, 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 gambling time. It's not quiet time. You are doing gambling. And you may run into that kind of difficulty. So morning by morning has to have a system. Have to, it has to have a pattern. You have to be deliberate about it, consistent about it, note it in your note. You see, the way I learned from my own disciple, the date is there. The place I'm doing it is there. The time I'm doing it is there. And the verse I stopped today is there. If by tomorrow God has not finished with what he was doing yesterday, I will say verse 7 to 8, continue. Because I'm not in haste to finish it. 
I'm not preparing to write Wayek on it. It's about an experience. It's about an encounter. It's about having to touch God. Now, so, do you notice what this man of God said? When God opened his ears, he said, morning by morning, he opened my ears. Now, when he opened my ears, what happened? You have left that scripture. The Lord God has opened my ear, verse 5, and I was not rebellious. Neither turned away back. What do you draw from there? Quiet time is a time for personal, personal word of God for you. God showing you where to repent, what to adjust, doubts to give up, fears and unbelief. Something that is a word for you. He opened my ear for my life, for my life. Quiet time is not about where you are sitting down to, to study about what they are going to preach. You are desecrating your quiet time. You are scattering it. Because it's supposed to be a time that God himself is engaging you one-on-one. -on -one. Where you can know when God is frowning with you. When God is happy with you. When God is challenging you. You are coming out of that place with a clear impression in your heart of what God is saying to you. So for Isaiah, he was not hearing for anybody. He was hearing first for who for himself that is the place where god makes his people morning by morning and when you say morning by morning you see the consistency you see there is something that has to be regular sometimes some of us we get distracted because you had a wonderful experience with god yesterday you, you know, the, as you are opening the Bible, it was opening to you. There was insight and all of that. So as you came today, and you opened, and the thing was looking blank. He said, Kai, the Holy Ghost is not around today. <laughs> so that's how you left the place. Correct spiritual progress. Is not haphazard. And you don't make an idol of a wonderful spiritual experience you had and therefore should secure to yourself from continuity. Did you get what I said? Because there's something wonderful that happened yesterday, happened last week, and today is not happening like that. That does not cut you off. It's a consistency. You are knocking at the door. Morning by morning. Hallelujah. You see David doing something like that? In Psalm 5 verse 3. Now, the next matter is your personal prayer life. That's another, another habit. We have talked of quiet time generally. Your personal prayer life. You're building a consistent personal altar as it were it is this time that the habit of fasting has to be formed it is this time that the habit of personal retreats have to be formed it is this time that the habit of personal vigil has to be formed and for some of us God helped us the days of our campus time. I found that the way we were challenged, each one of us grew our roots as individuals. Our fasting days were fixed. Everybody knew that this particular day of the week is my day with the Lord. Do you have such a day in the week that you know Yes, on Friday, I'm waiting on God. 
Or on Tuesday, I'm waiting on. And it's a normal life. That is for the, for the regular ones. But you see, it's also at this time that, you know, you take spiritual projects. There are issues that can move you to be a burden of prayer before God. I remember when God challenged me as on the matter. I was studying uh, Daniel and the matter came. Is there nothing that can sustain your body for this kind of prayer for three weeks? And some issues came to my heart. So I said, Lord, so how can I do it? And so I decided. I started. No, no food. There will be fruits. I will take fruits. I will take um, uh, uh, serelac, that thing that children drink. And I will eat uh, fruits and that's all. And I began. After the, the second week, I was in the third week, one day, I was returning from, you know, from lecture to the laboratory and so on. As I was coming, my legs were struggling to carry me. I was shaking. As I was getting near my house, I told the Lord, I said, excuse me, if somebody does not break this thing, someone will arrive heaven faster than it's normal now. That's how I broke it. It's a, it's a growth that, you see, it's, you, are, you are learning. A baby that has to walk, has to crawl. Sometimes you wobble and then you stand up. So after I ate, oh, I felt terrible. I gained strength, but I was feeling bad. And so, so I said, God, I'm sorry. I repent. Let us continue from where we stop. He said, no. <laughs> God said, there's nothing like that. The discipline you needed to learn. You have, not, you have to cancel the one you did and start again. And that's what I did. And then I pushed on for those three weeks. Got through. Of course, in the midst of it, there was a sister that had a challenge. And we needed to fast and wait on God three days, marathon, night and day. This time, I was not going to take my fruits again. She didn't know, of course, I was on a journey. But I agreed. We started. And three days, three nights, day and night. And that's how we pushed it. At the end of it. Later she, she's, uh, she's of a, a well-to-do family. She went and cooked a big cooler of chicken. Chicken pepper soup. Slaughtered a number. She would be not less than two chicken inside that big cooler and brought uh, so that, you know, man of God, we also, you know. So, but she didn't know. I could not perform. I remembered how I felt before. So, I simply told my roommate. I said, see, bro, there's something. Ah, brother said, ah, and you are in fast, you know. <laughs> That's how he... He broke plate and started tearing it. I had to run away from the room. <laughs> There's a time to do all of that. When is that time? When is that time? Now. You may start small and the struggle. Your struggle should not make you stop. One sister that began uh, fasting in the fellowship those days with uh, one of, uh, of her sisters, two of them, so one has been used to fasting. The other one started. He said, I have never fasted before. She said, if I fast beyond 10, I will die. Old. And she was encouraged. She started. She started. In the course of time, as she started, the sister met her around the uh, you know, between 10 and 11, where she was drinking mineral. He said, ah, ah, 
are you still not fast? Are you, did you break? He said, no, I didn't break the fast. Though. Is, is mineral not part of it? Some of you are doing chewing gum, chewing biscuits and drinking mineral and say, I'm still... You have to die to such. Are you with me? Now, the matter of retreats, sometimes it's a one-day retreat, sometimes it's an extended retreat, and you're pushing your prayer life. You are enlarging. When you get to the place of prayer, enlarge your prayer base. Don't be narrow. Just say, Lord, about my exam, Lord, about uh, uh, my, 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 my lecture. And that's all. This is the time to pray wide. Become a global Christian at heart. Pray for the nations. Pray for issues. Every single day of the week, there should be a prayer focus. Then I used to write it. You no, know, wrote them down. Every day has an emphasis. And then slip it at the back of my Bible. But over the years, it's no more on paper. It's in my head. That when you're waking up, sometimes you are still feeling dizzy. Where do I start praying? If you don't know where to start, start in the one you know that is for that day. And your spirit will wake up. By the time your spirit wakes up, you can now go further. Praise the Lord. The same thing, your prayers, your personal study life, you need to base, you need to develop it. Not only prayer life, your study life. And you have to have methods. Whether you're doing book study or you're doing character study, you're doing, you know, bi biographical study or you're doing a survey. You just want to survey something in scriptures. And you are learning to read good books. You are learning to download correct messages. And you are building your spirit. It's also time for developing your personal uh, witnessing life. So winning. Growing in the passion of one on one. Many of us are familiar, I mean are attracted, you know, to the microphone. But the ability to engage a soul you have not yet trained that habit. You have not grown in it. And this is the time to do it. The issue of follow-up, the issue of discipling others, the issue of learning, you know, the, the mind of God, spiritual guidance, how to know the will of God, understanding divine guidance. And all of this will also require that your discipleship becomes critical. It's also at this stage that there must be someone that is bearing spiritual oversight upon your life, as we have been hearing. Now, all of these are part of the practical means by which your roots will have to grow. As I close, I want you to still look on that Isaiah, this time, chapter 49. Isaiah 49. Verse 2. And he had made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand has he hid me and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver has he hid me. Amen. I want you to note that hiding again. We read that scripture that says he will cause those that escaped out of Judah to grow their roots how? Downwards. In obscurity. In hiding. For this man to become a polished shaft, an effective enduring instrument in the hand of God. For him to have, you know, the the, the utterance like a sharp sword. Do you notice that there was the season of hiding him in the quiver? The season of obscurity. The season 
of growing your foundation, growing your root. John the Baptist, no matter all the prophecies that were on his head, the Bible was very clear. In Luke chapter 1, verse 80, he said, And the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit and was in the desert, hidden away until, until something formed in his life, until God could bring him to the limelight, until God could bring him out, because it's time now for fruit to be born upward. The Lord Jesus himself, the same experience. In Luke chapter 2, you hear the word of God recording in the last verse there. He said, Jesus, he increased. There was a growth process. He increased in wisdom, in his relationship with God, in his social relationship with people, and in stature, there was a progression. There's the time of that increase. And if the dew of your youth will be such, will be voluminous enough to refresh you through the daytime of your life, there is this time of digging deep, this time of obscurity, this time that you are not too eager about the limelight. And we are noting that here and there, churches are very excited to put you put you where you appear to be shining. Whereas you are still hollow. Your roots are still shallow. And we notice what happened to that banana tree or plant that even fruitfulness can collapse your life where you lack spiritual stamina. You're having need to pray this morning to ask the Lord to do something to hide you in the quiver of his dealing. You're asking God to cut off this craving for the sunlight because roots don't grow in sunlight. Roots grow in the secret, in, the, in obscurity. You're saying, Lord, this time of dew, help me to gather enough dew that we keep my life Refreshed through the years of my daytime. I'd like you to rise as we pray together. The more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus. More of you. I want. Go ahead and talk to the Lord now. Lord, draw my heart. Draw my heart after you. Draw my heart after you. Draw me into the secret place. This is the time of my hiding. This is the time of my growing my roots. Oh Lord, draw me. Deliver me from the love of the outside. I must not be a man of the open field. Corner my heart back to you. Corner my heart, oh God. 
into a deep search for you. Draw me, Lord Jesus. Cause me to hear you. Cause me, oh God, to be drawn in passion after you, oh God. To grow in the secret place. To grow in the place of knowing you, experiencing you. Lord, this is the time. This is the time, oh God. This is the time, Lord. Draw my heart, draw my heart. Lord, draw my heart. In Jesus' name we have prayed.